Matt, how do you feel that we need more data in terms of inflation to get comfortable to put more risk at play? Or do you find areas now that you can double down? Yeah, I would say we're more in the latter case. I mean, we think that leveraged loans um, are a nice place to be. Total returns, we think, for the rest of the year in kind of the mid-6% range. Um, and again, that's just for the next nine months. Um, but high grade and high yield as well. We have a forecast ultimately that inflation does come down. Uh, as the Fed has said, it may be bumpy, but we think the next three to four months provide a nice window for continued disinflation. And that means even in high grade and high yield, we're looking for returns for the rest of the year, close to call it four and a half to five and a half percent. So we like single Bs uh, within the leveraged loan market. Uh, we still like triple Cs in high yield and still feels to us uh, like this cycle still has a little bit more room to run. And client positioning, I would say, is slightly overweight, but it's not um, its not excessive. Um, people are not, I would say, complacent uh, or very aggressively long of risk. And so we think that this is the right time to incrementally add a little bit more risk into those higher beta sectors of the market. How do you feel about where things could start to change your mind about taking more risk? Yeah, I think Megan's spot on with, you know, with no landing, so to speak. The challenge in that environment, I think, is, you know, is the market really going to get concerned if the Fed ultimately, in terms of market pricing, goes from pricing three cuts this year, let's say back to one. And we've already priced out, you know, three plus cuts earlier in the year. And credit was resilient. I think the reason for that is growth held up, right? And so in a no landing scenario, I think, you know, we certainly assume that growth holds up, meaning earnings growth and economic growth. And so I think it's going to take some time uh, for that to translate into the Fed messaging, not just that we're not going to cut, but that we may need to start hiking again. And it's that point that I think is the salient one. If the market has to worry about another Fed hiking cycle, I think you will see credit spreads underperform. But the way that we've modeled that is we just think OER and some of the goods disinflation continues to come in the next couple of months. Then you've obviously running into the second half of the year, have the election. And so I don't think the Fed really has time to shift that dramatically and the market start to ask, are we actually going to have another hiking cycle until the very end of the year after the election or maybe even in early 2025? And that's why I say we think it's a nice time in the next quarter or two you know, to add risk. Away from that, we're certainly watching profits in the upcoming earnings season. But I think the growth data means that nominal earnings growth is going to hold up quite well. Mm -hmm. The other thing right. I would say is systemic risk. But again, we're not seeing a lot of signs of cracks in areas like lower rated corporate credit, CRE, or even consumer credit.